All right, you sexists, the Guardian is here to tell you exactly why your sabotage on Captain Marvel is going to fail. Captain Marvel, why sexist attempts at sabotage will fail? Brie Larson is the brand new public enemy number one, but the movie is still on track for U.S. bow with more than a hundred million. Ha, 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 ha. We will see about that, won't we? For sexist keyboard warriors everywhere, the mere sight of Captain Marvel's Brie Larson must be enough to make them break out in hives. <laughs> These people are so dumb. I I keep on saying this because it's so true and it just baffles me. Every time, every time, it just baffles me. We don't have a problem that is a woman. That is not a problem. And you don't understand what our actual problem is with this movie and with Brie Larson. You guys it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't get in here, does it? No, it just, it, it just bounces off your forehead like, like when you shoot like a pea shooter at like a wall or something. It's just like boop. It just is you you just it, the concept of why we have a problem with this movie just will never make sense to you guys because all you see are just identity politics and if if someone doesn't like this movie, then they're automatically a sexist and a misogynistic bigot racist uh what's what's that new incel, that's it. So yeah, everyone's an incel now. That's that's the new buzzword apparently with the the NPCs. So this to the average men's rights advocate is a concept of irredeemable outlandishness. Wait. What are what are men's rights ad advocates? I've never even heard of, of someone being a men's rights advocate. I'm sure there's probably some people out there, but they there's probably only like two people that actually think like that in in the USA. For Danvers is a slender, sylph-like female in a natty '80s inspired suit, while Thanos is a great hulking purple muscle-bound male. Never mind that both are completely fictional with superpowers. The problem here is that. Girls will never be stronger than boys, okay? That's not our problem. That's not the problem that we have with this movie, okay? That's that's just... Uh. I'm actually just feeling sorry for these people at this point. These people are... So sad. They're so sad. They don't know what... They don't know what to do. They, they don't know how to think. They just... They... It's... Uh... How can people be this dumb? They just, they, they don't understand. They don't understand that we don't have a problem with, our fundamental problem isn't with Captain America, or <laughs> Captain Marvel being the one that could end up being the one that defeats Thanos. I've been rooting for a long time that I think Nebula should be the one that defeats Thanos. I think that'd be amazing. I think if Nebula and Gamora were the two in Endgame who teamed up and defeated Thanos, that would be perfect. That would be amazing. What? But but I thought you had a problem with women. No, no. <laughs> I know, I know. Crazy, right? Crazy. It's, uh, I know, It's it, it probably just fried all the NPCs' brains when I said that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I seriously don't have a problem with, with women being the ones that defeat Thanos. I don't. That's not my problem. That's not my problem. And that's not any of our problems, I don't think, at least. Sil Larson might have remained a relatively minor hate figure to the trolls had it not been for a decision to go one step further than her predecessors in the crossfire. Oh, she's so brave. What a brave woman. What a brave, strong, empowered woman. By choosing to use her newfound fame to advance progressive causes that are close to her heart. Yeah, when you're promoting a movie, you shouldn't be trying to promote identity politics. You should be trying to promote the movie. That would probably be the smart way to go about this. And then we have here her in insane quotes where she talks about how she doesn't want white men to be the ones that interview her and all that crap. Um, Somewhere in a fetid corner of the internet, the trolls, or possibly Russian stooges, <laughs> uh, blinked and raised themselves from their fitful slumber. The knives have been sharpened, and just a few weeks later, we have the first signal that Larson is the brand new number one enemy. Captain Marvel has been bombarded with negative audience reviews, all by commentators who couldn't possibly have seen the movie, which has not yet had a single public screening, often labeling Larson a social justice warrior whose progressive views mean she doesn't deserve the white male dollar. 
Yeah, when you say things like you don't care about the opinions of white men, which is very sexist of you to say, and when you say things you don't want the people interviewing you to be overwhelmingly white and male, which is also a very sexist and racist thing to say, yeah, we, we're gonna have a problem with that. I know, I know, it's crazy because literally you can do whatever you want and say whatever you want against white men, and it's, it's not sexist or racist at all for you guys. But for people with common sense who like consistency with arguments and with viewpoints, yeah, we, we have a problem with that. I somehow feel that the scrolls are not the enemy, but that I am, since Brie Larson has been careful to state she doesn't want the press tour to include types like me, writes JP, referencing Captain Marvel's extraterrestrial nemesis, while Jonathan B. writes simply, tired of all this SJW nonsense. Unfortunately for the haters, this latest campaign to ruin Marvel movies, box office hopes seems no more likely to prove successful than last year's effort to destroy Black Panther's Rotten Tomatoes rating. Wait, what? If there remains a diversity deficit in Hollywood, both behind and in front of the camera, it also seems that increasingly there's a diversity dividend for those movies that wear the progressive hearts on their sleeves. Oh, so beautiful. Oh. Yeah, no, no, seriously. Nobody has a problem with diversity in these movies. Nobody's ever had a problem with, you know, female female characters being in these movies. Nobody's ever had a problem with people of color being in these movies. That is not the issue that we have. Anyway, these people are upset because we are pushing back against them. We are speaking up, we are sharing our voices, we are getting a louder voice in entertainment and in fandom in general. And because of that, they don't like that. The mainstream media does not like the platform that we have right now. They do not like it at all. And they're pushing back against us harder and harder. And that just means that we have to step it up and we have to continue to push back as well. We will win. We are winning. Slowly but surely. And they don't like that. They, they're they flailing and kicking and screaming right now because they know that they are not winning, but they're trying to put on a good face. They're, they're trying to make it seem like that we're not making any impact at all on these films, but we are. We are, so keep it up everybody. We're doing a great job. These people are upset and it's hilarious to watch. I I, I just think it's funny. I think it's funny that, that these people are writing all these articles now about how, how we are basically just trolls and sexists and misogynists and all of their favorite little buzzwords and I, I just think it's hilarious because they know that we have power they say that we don't have any power but we do have power and they know it so keep it up everybody we're doing a great job keep it up keep on pushing back against the identity politics and maybe maybe just someday we'll, we'll get to a point where we can have movies like Alita where it's a female-led movie which is great but it comes without the need of identity politics attached. That is a place we need to get to. And I think that if we continue to support movies like Alita, we can get to that point. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I will talk to you very soon in another video. Talk to you later. Bye.